Good morning. Welcome to our service here this morning, the third Sunday of Lent. Also, a warm welcome to those streaming in live with us this morning. In this service, we want to celebrate Holy Communion. In Holy Communion, we receive the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sin. I greet you with the watchword for this coming week, as it is taken from the Gospel of Luke, which is also our Gospel reading for today, chapter 9, verse 62. No one who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. We'd just like to make the following announcements. I first want to start off with the services for next week. Next week, Sunday, there are three services taking place. There's an 8.30 service here at St. Andrews. It's a divine service with the Children's Church. Thereafter, it's a 10.30 service in Kumkov. It's a Holy Communion service followed by the IJM. Then, in the evening, our monthly evening service takes place at St. Crucis at 6 o'clock. It's maximum a 40-minute service. It's more, it takes more the form of devotion. And that also means that the promotion costs next week at 4 o'clock at St. Crucis. Then, on Wednesday, we continue on our journey of stones. That's a theme for the Lenten devotions this year. The service will take place here at St. Andrews. And the theme is Hearts of Stone. We want to look at what that is all about, and that service is at 6 o'clock. If you need a lift for that service from me and I, please want to just contact me or Bettina. If you can just park all together. Then there's an Easter raffle. Bettina has a list for an Easter raffle that is going to take place. If you've got something to donate to this hamper, please also tell Bettina. Then, as you've most probably noticed, the newsletters are out, a new edition. Bettina has been out. Please look at the services for the next two months. We're also heading into Easter. Just reminded that Easter is the normal form where we have an earlier service at 8 o'clock followed by brunch afterwards. Then we want to think of the following people in our coastal parish and the three congregations. We want to think of Wendy and Trevor Kiediger. We want to think of Daniel Hoyer. We want to think of Sylvia Kretzmann. We want to pray for Leonard Jordan and also Valerie Engelbrand. Let us keep these people in our prayers in our service and ask God to strengthen them in their various situations that they are facing. We are in Lent and in Lent we always journey with Jesus towards the cross. This Sunday we hear about the cost of following Jesus, the Lamb of God and what that means for our life, and how Jesus, the Lamb of God, gives us everything that we need in our life. I ask you please to stand. Lift up your voice and call out to God. We cry out, believing that God hears us. Come together and wait for God. We come together, trusting that God is still speaking. Surely God's presence is here with us now. We, we wait, wait in hope, for God's steadfast love lifts our hearts. Come, let us praise the Lord our God, God who is our God of love and mercy. We, we ask that God forgives us and restores us. Let us celebrate the service together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Our first hymn that we want to start the service with is, In Your Hand, My Saviour.
Dear congregation, please stand. <coughs> Let us not come before the Lord with words from a people of old. Let us call on the Lord with words from Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who are evil to blot out their name on the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He the, from all the Lord is close to all those who are broken and parted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. <coughs> Evil will slay the wicked. Wicked, the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Dear congregation, in this time of Lent, we also want to focus on ourselves, to focus inwards on ourselves, and also confess to the Lord there where we have sinned. Let us not enter the time of confession. I ask you to respond with God's. Let us now return to the Lord, who will have mercy and abundantly pardon us. Let us pray. O oh God, you are a God who sees us, a God who calls us to follow you on the journey to your kingdom. You come to us where we are. Lord, help us to open our hearts to allow you to enter our life. Lord, we find it difficult because we are fearful, shameful of our mistakes and weaknesses. Lord, forgive us for not allowing you to enter our life, we call out. Lord, you have mercy. O God, you see us and call us to follow you on the journey to your kingdom. Lord, we admit that when we hear your call, we find it difficult to let go of the things that are dear to us, to which we cling. We find it difficult to, to surrender ourselves to you completely, because we are overcome by fear. Lord, forgive us for not letting go. We call out. Christ, have mercy. O God, you see us and you call us to follow you on the journey to your kingdom. Lord, you call us to trust you. We admit that we trust in ourselves, in our own abilities and worldly things. Yet we admit that these often shatter our trust. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for not trusting you. We call out. Lord, have mercy. The steadfast love. The Lord is steadfast in love and hears the prayers of all who seek his mercy. God reaches out to us in Christ, forgiving us our sins and nourishing us with love without limit. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty, and merciful God, your dear Son, willingly endured the agony and the shame of a cross for our sake. Give us the courage, the patience, to take up our cross and to follow him. For he reigns and lives with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Kindly be seated, let us hear the pistol reading. Pistol reading for today is written in chapter 5 of the letter to the Ephesians. Paul says, Be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, 
a fragment, fragment offering and sacrifice to God. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. This is the word of the Lord. Let us now sing our next hymn, Lo, the way is low. disciples were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no way to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us now 
up and face our Christian faith with the words of the Gospel's Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our next hymn that we want to sing is one of the older hymns, and it is called Jesus by my cross have taken. We sing only verse one. sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chosen as our ransom long before the world began, but now in these last days has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ you have come to trust in God, 
and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. So hear the word of God, let us pray. God who dwells alongside us, even within us, your breath gives us life, and you gift us with the gift of faith. Now breathe in your living word into us, so that it may reshape our life, so that we may be witnesses of your grace and messengers of your goodness in this world. Amen. <coughs> Dear friends in Christ, at the moment it's still summer and we're quite hot. But winter is around the door, around the corner. What keeps you warm on those cold winter's days? A cup of coffee? Maybe a steaming cup of hot chocolate at night? Or a warm wool jersey? Or being wrapped up in a cuddly warm blanket? In our own life, so to say, we experience those cold winter's days of life as well. These are the times when life is just hard, when life just seems not to make sense at all. Peter, the author of this letter, wrote this letter to a small community of Christians that find themselves in the coldness of their life. Even though it was written so many years ago, we too can relate to this letter in certain ways. This Christian community felt the coldness of doubt setting in. They had to witness, they had to see with their own eyes how their own fellow brothers and sisters were martyred, were killed for their faith. They ask God, how can you allow this? We also are asking this question at the moment when we look at our world and what's happening around us through all the suffering, the violence and the war. We do ask, God, where are you in all of this? We too then feel how we are overcome by the coldness of doubt. <coughs> this Christian community felt how the coldness of hopelessness was setting in. They feel discouraged. They are only a small community of Christians, few in numbers. In our time, we are also struggling with a discouragement of dwindling Christians communities across the world. This Christian community felt how the coldness of old habits was creeping back into their lives. And we know all too well how easily we slip back into the busyness of our lives and into old bad habits. And as we slip back into these habits and into the business of life, we slowly drift away from God because we lose contact with God. And these cold winter days in our life, when life is hard and does not make sense, what will be this warm? That's the question we ask. And it's our human nature to rely on and find comfort in worldly things that seem so valuable to us. And Peter here mentions three things that we value or find or try and find comfort in. in inherited values, in silver and in gold. We tend to think that our inherited value principle system, like our culture, our traditions, our wisdom, our standards, will give us the security of warmth that we need. For example, we cling 
to the value of economical growth, of innovation, and of the medical knowledge that we have. We tend, on the other side, to think that through our own achievements, we can create a silver lining in our life. For example, we are under the false illusion that we can earn God's love and mercy through our own achievements, our own accomplishments. Or we can, we think we can free ourselves through our own doing from the guilt that weighs us down. Thirdly, we tend to think that our golden glitter of our possessions will give us the warmth of happiness and acceptance. And yet, if we are really honest with ourselves, we experience how our inherited value system, the silver lining of our own achievements, the golden things that we own, fail us horribly. Peter reminds us in this letter that these things lose their value. They are perishable. They lead to disappointment. Therefore, no weight of our inherited value system, no weight of silver or gold, can ever determine our human worth. Nor can it keep our soul secure. Nor can it keep us warm those bitter cold winter days that we experience in this life. In other words, we have to admit something is missing. We are still cold. Peter goes on in his letter, and he describes Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God that gives us the life giving warmth that we need in our life. And he goes on to write, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb, that freed us, that gives us warmth. In other words, Jesus Christ gives our life true meaning. Jesus can relate to our cold winter days that we experience in our life. Jesus too experienced suffering, betrayal, people talking about him and not to him, temptation, frustration, the death of a friend, exhaustion, family conflict, and so the list goes on. Jesus was the one who cried out on the cross, God, where are you in this? And yet, Jesus, the spotless lamb, goes to the cross for you, for me, for the whole of creation. To take our sins, our griefs, our troubles upon himself. Jesus then sets us free from the enslavement of our sin, our guilt. Jesus makes us his very own. Jesus is the one who gives us our work. Jesus is the one who gives us our freedom through the cross. All this Jesus did through spilling the, his blood for us on the cross. Through his blood, through his wounds, we are all healed. We are at peace with God through the pain of Jesus. All this Jesus does for you and for me. Jesus is our spotless Lamb of God who gives our life meaning and reminds us our past is in our past. Jesus provides the warmth that we need when we then experience these bitter, cold, winter days in our life. And then, 
God gives us a gift from the wool of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. God makes us a special gift, a gift that provides warmth to us in our life, even on those cold winter days when we feel all alone. This gift is the wool jersey of faith that we are to wear as Peter writes, through Christ you have come to trust in God. You have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. In other words, the wool jersey of faith provides us with the warmth of love with the warmth of trust, with the warmth of faith, with the warmth of hope that we need in our life. The warmth of love that we have through Jesus is that God loves us, God accepts us, God is the one who gives us our worth. We are worthy to be called a child of God. The warmth of trust that we have through Jesus Christ is. God has proven himself faithfully, has proven himself trustworthy. God keeps his promises. The warmth of faith that we have through Jesus is that Jesus sustains us throughout all the seasons that we experience in our life and that he is always present. We are never alone, even if we feel like that. Christ is present in our suffering, in the hardness of love. And then, the warmth of hope that we have through Jesus' death and resurrection is twofold. Firstly, we have hope because we have been set free from those things that hold us captive our sin, our guilt, and also those thoughts that hold us captive that we have to try and earn God's love. Secondly, we have hope because death no longer has the final say in our life. God's kingdom is present here, now, among us. That means we are now already living in the unending presence of God, our Father, who will give us everything that we need in life, even if it seems not to be the case. Dear friends in Christ, so we come to the end of the sermon. Yes, life is not easy. There will be those bitter, cold winter nights in our life where life just does not make sense. Where life is hard and where we just have to acknowledge we don't have the answers. Yet Jesus this morning comes to us through his living word and reminds us don't seek comfort and assurances and the false promise, promises of gold and silver in this world. Jesus shares with us a wonderful comfort that we may have. Our past is in the past. Jesus, the Lamb of God, through his precious blood that was spilled on the cross, has set us free and encourages us now to put on the wool jersey of faith that he has given to us as an amazing gift. The wool jersey of faith that gives us a comforting warmth of love, trust, faith and hope to endure the different seasons that we experience in this world. And may the peace of God and his grace 
a peace that transcends all our understanding. May God our hearts, our minds, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. The hymn that we now want to sing is called No Weight of Gold and Silver. There are three verses that we want to sing in the trusted melody in the church's one foundation. To be one in song with creation, we give you thanks and praise. For you, God of all, the church in its many forms and countless languages honors its Savior. Millions upon millions invite us to be one in the drama of worship. We give you thanks and praise. In heaven, beyond our sea, the angels, the saints are caught up in song. And those we have loved and lost are part of this great company. 
They call us to be one with the harmony of heaven. We give you thanks and praise. So gladly we join our voices to those of the earth, the sky, and the sea, and a universal hymn of praise that echoes through eternity by singing the old, holy, holy, holy.
Let us now turn to our Lord in the time of prayer, where we want to thank God for the gift of Holy Communion that we just received, and where we want to bring our needs, our concerns also to God, our Father. Generous and faithful God, you have fed us now at your table. May the nourishment that we have received enable us to enrich the lives of others, wherever we go from here. Whether the future be dark or bright, the road be smooth or rough, whether our cares be light or heavy, our song be strong or weak, keep our hearts warm, our hands open, our lives ever embracing, ever embrace in your love. Gracious Father, we thank you for giving your Son to take away the sin of the world. Lead us into repentance and faith. Thank you for your Son's obedience to your will all the way to his death on the cross. Help us to be patient and humble, following Jesus and serving others. Thank you that your Son cared for the sick, the trouble, and still goes to them. Make us compassionate and stand towards others. Bring your mercy and care through us. Thank you that your Son knew temptation, suffering, and death and how to deliver us from it. Be with all who face temptation, suffering, and death, and lead them to have the sure hope in the promises of Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your dear Son, our Lord. Christ, be our merciful Redeemer, friend, and brother. Help us now to be the more clearly, love him more dearly, follow him more nearly, for he lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, you are the body of Christ. May you have a heart of Christ, tender for mercy. May you have the eyes of Christ to see the world in need. May you have the feet of Christ to bring the good news to where God sends you. May God's blessing be, you, be with you and accompany you during this week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. Let us remain standing and let us sing our last hymn, verses 1 till 3, Trust and Abide. <coughs>
Thank mm-hmm. you.